Good evening to one and all present here with us. We welcome you to the Time Techno Plus Q2 and H1 FY25 earnings conference call hosted by Kaviraj Private Limited. This conference may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantee of future performances and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhijit Mukesh Purohit from Kavira Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Kaviraj Securities Private Limited welcomes you all for Q2 H1 FY25 earnings conference call of Time Technoplast Limited. Today, on the call, we have with us the management team, which is represented by Mr. Bharat Kumar Vageria, Managing Director, Mr. Raghupati Tyagrajan, Whole Time Director, Mr. Sandeep Modi, Senior VP Accounts and Corporate Planning, and Mr. Heyman Soni, VP Legal and Corporate Affairs. Now, without any further delays, I hand over the call to Mr. Bharat Kumar Vageria for his opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to all the <coughs> participants and my colleagues. And thank you, Mr. Abhijit, for the introduction to management. It's our pleasure to convene today the present and discuss the result for Q2 and H1 or FY2025, as well as to provide our outlook for the remainder of the fiscal year, FY25. We are pleased to report a continued tension over Q2, FY25, with a year-on-year -year growth of 17% in volume and corresponding 15% in the revenue. There is a difference of 2% because of the prices uh, seen in the downward trend and uh, as the company policy to uh, transfer the prices to the customer. This performance has been earned under print by robust demand in our industrial packaging segment alongside an exceptional 36% surge in our CNG composite cascade business. Additionally, our profit after tax for the Q2 has demonstrated an impressive year-on-year -year increase of 40% and is even more the similar increase was in the Q1 also. Reflecting the benefit of optimized capacity utilization and uh, as well as the reduction in the pendants and the depreciation costs. The demand for type 4 composite cylinder for CNG cascade remained particularly strong with our current order book standing in approximately Rs. 185 crores. This momentum is complemented by substantial growth in the sale of our valuated product including composite cylinder for both LPG CNG. While our core industrial packaging business continue to perform with stability. Given the favorable trends and the solid foundations we have established across our key businesses segments, we remain confident in our prospect for the remainder of the year. As in the beginning itself, we have said, we will grow around the 15% and that's the hope it will continue. In spite of you, we all are aware that there were the challenges quarter this year, especially because rain seasons were increased substantially and uh, last in the month of October also rainy was there. But looking to that, I think the remaining five months looks um, very good as far as India party is concerned. With that, I would like to turn over the attention to the detailed financial and operational highlights which have been communicated before in our results. Let us take a moment to review the key takeaways together. During Q2 FY25, I will provide you the Q2 FY24 figure also on a consolidation basis. Net sell achieved 1,372 crores as against the previous year, same period was 1,195 crores. So there is a revenue growth of 15%. The NIBEDA is increased 197 crores from 167 crores. Paid after tax is increased to 98 crores as against 70 crores. We are just two runs away from the century. So we hope should get it in the next quarter. Compared with the corresponding quarter previous year, 
the net sale increased 15 percent and almost in India 14 percent overseas little more achievement is 16 percent volume increased 16 percent India overseas 18 percent EBITDA increased overall 18 percent and paid increased by 40 percent the first half of the uh, on consolidation basis normally I have clarified in the past um, um, uh, this constant call also. Normally, in the first half, we achieve 45 percent of our revenue. In first quarter, 22 percent, and second quarter, 24 percent. And balance 55 percent, we achieve in the second and third quarter. This is 26 percent and around 28 percent. So during the H1 of 25, net sale is to 2,600 crores, 6, 2,602 crores exactly. As against 2,225 crores, EBITDA 372 crores as against 315 last year. Profit after tax 178 as against 127. So in terms of the percentage, sale increased by 14 percent. Almost Indian overseas are same. Volume is also Indian overseas same 16 percent. EBITDA increased by 18 percent. Fat increased by 40 percent. H125 EBITDA margin is there is a sub increase in the EBITDA margins also by 40 basis points means it achieved 40.3 percent as against 39 13.9 percent the previous year same half first half. Now share of the business yes when you have seen the EBITDA margin improvement is there it means percentage of the established versus valued products mm. is increased. Valuated products grew by 21% in H1 FY25 as compared to HY FY24, while established product grew by 13%. The share of the valuated product is now 27%. The total sale in FY25 as against 25,000 gold. And I again, when talking about the valuated products, companies also taking target of achieving 35% valuated product sale in the next two to three years' time. So we are on that direction only. <coughs> now share of the India and overseas business remain constant in edge, continue as 65% India, 35% overseas. And EBITDA margin at the both India and overseas surpassed the 14% range. Net cash from operating activities continuously increasing and companies uh, is H1 FI20 is 238 crores. Company focus on debt reduction is continued in the first half reduced by 32 crores. Total capex incurred during the 1 FI 25 was 94 crores, which is included to be 39 crores to the regular maintenance capex, capacity expansion, reengineering, automation, etc., and 55 crores towards valuated products, mainly composite products and the other IBC. Now certain major events which has occurred during this quarter, I can say first half also would like to give your attention, even though I have given an earning presentation clarification, uh, because some of the people in between have also asked, I thought it is better to give clarifications on the conference call. So most of the people who are present or personal investor can come to know about that. And these all the things already informed with NSC, BSC, stock actions as per the required guidelines. Now, especially as far as the QIP concerns, as the company board has uh, um, approved QIP, qualified institution placement, of 1000, up to 1000 crores, and this is an enabling resolution, object is already mentioned, and as this resolution is valid for one year time. Because I have received certain questions from my investor why it is required. I am again clarifying all of you, it is enabling resolution for the next one year time. In spite of companies are on plan to become a debt free by March 26, but we start if it is better prior to that, then we can become the faster debt free company. And company has no, the objective is also mentioned in the this QIP, major object, the debt repayment, expansion plan, for brownfield and new products, valued products mainly, CNG, LPG, and hydrogen. I have also clarified in the last my conference call further that certain Indian government gas distribution company need a same size of the cylinder that is 14.5 kg cylinders, which company is under development. 
but it is going to take time and further in the present scenario all the distributor mates of the government companies are ongoing so that company can also understand the market size and took the necessary action to put the capacity on place so this is the advance we ourselves are keeping ready for that now another company is also focusing and we are all aware that day by day or month and month the the main power cost is increasingly labor cost is increasing so companies are also focusing on the increase in the labor cost so company is very focusing on the automation reengineering modifications of the existing equipments modes to maintain the productivity and increase the productivity and reduce the cost in terms of the kg for the main power and further even though it is mentioned that funding the organic is okay inorganic growth in the areas of the operations yes i'm i'm just to tell you as on date i don't have any acquisition plan on the company because company has own plan organic growth and the company has own plan as mentioned recently the working capital requirement because company is growing 15% as we have decided the company should be debt free so additional working capital requirement even though company is focusing reducing the working capital cycle days which at one point of time was 120 days which is now reduced to 100 days so focus is on and first company will achieve target to achieve the working capital cycle days of 85 to 90 days in the next two years time then another thing uh which is i have mentioned we got the consolidation of the subsidiary companies power bill batteries and the net i just give you recollect this company company has gone into this energy storage devices manufacturing long back in 2007 presently two companies same line of the products and uh, manufacturing and two manufacturing places are there but company thought it is better to use the resources available main power resources marketing resources and to the common better efficiency and effective utilization of the resources company management has approved so that overall profitability can be improved and the overall roc from this company their company has made an investment of approximately rupees uh, 69 crores invested by time techno plus as a listed company in both the companies together so that is the objective for the increase the margins then another you have seen one of my subsidiary tpl plastic with 75% subsidy of time techno which is engaged in manufacturing of packaging products only ibc drum jerry cans conical pails but mainly that also includes the value added product ibc which time techno is also manufacturing but as <coughs> this company is also their own expansion plan time techno plastic has no ibc manufacturing in the maharashtra region and the good demand is coming which is already mentioned a reason for demand in that konkon region so this and uh, it's a government long term lease have already been allotment that are received so in the next 3 4 months time company will plan the project cost identify and uh, then we'll do this project is estimated to complete next year and uh, just when i am talking on this subject uh, last year the tpl plastic subsidiary company has completed expansion project in dahej overwhelming response is there capacity utilization is already reached to the 70% in a in a in the next 6 months time already it is achieved in the last 6 months time so <coughs> looking to that overwhelming response company thought which is to logistic cost basis and other cost basis to put up the plant in the konkon uh, region so this can be the first and more advantage There are another things everybody would like to hear because you know that last three to ten months somebody was asked all the people must be asking me what about the overseas sales? But as I mentioned very clearly, the company had agreed initially by way of a offer letter was received, but that offer letter was received based on the 22 and 23 EBITDA margin. But now as the company has achieved the growth of more than 15 percent in Middle East. further in the last 3 4 months company has management has decided to put their own plant in sharja which will be around 100% by subsidiary of plant technoblast limited so it is better now in uncertainty situation to call up that uh, the sale business 
because it is very clear when companies are earning more than 350 to 400 crores in a year and the company was estimating the realization of 150 crores net of the taxes for sale proceeds of the 50 percent stack so i have been advised by my board member not to sell this business and grow company for overseas businesses it is already evident and growth is there in the middle east good growth considering the especially in middle east uh, I can say the Saudi is up, good upcoming chemical zone uh, areas and then Saudi government is welcoming to expatriate and they are giving good kind of the benefits to the to the industry people so we thought it is better to put our own unit there in Saudi currently we are servicing from our nearby countries Bahrain and small units available in Saudi also and this will be the 100% ownership Another thing also, I have clarified my note, sell of the non-core assets, which is, efforts is continuing. You remember that I have told in the last October number, there is a targeted, reasonable value estimated was 125 crores. So we have fulfilled our promise, and almost 50% already realized around 65 crores. And for the balance 60 crores, efforts are on and estimating in the next 12 months time. This fund also will be utilized for the um, uh, capex plan so overall capex if i tell you that we have a range of maximum range of 200 crores and if out of that we are realizing 125 crores so net capex will be very very minimum now <coughs> i have covered most of the things but if any other things i have left so i am keeping open over uh, open the floor for the questions if any which i have not covered Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jatin Dhamanya from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Good oh, morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Is my voice audible? Yeah. So just want to understand regarding our business. Now, when we indicated that we are not going ahead with the sale of the UAE or the Middle East plan, how shall one look at the overall growth in the Middle East when we had decided in the past that we wanted to sell it. So when you compare with our past six numbers, how can one look at the fortune of the Middle East operation? Yeah. <coughs> Jatin? Yes, sir. Ah, this is the only question you have or any other question? No, sir, I have a couple of more. So I think you ask, give me your question first. I will answer at a time of your other questions. One regarding the UAE, right? Yeah, and, sec and secondly, on the loan for assets, the last quarter we were decided to dispose around 90 crores. Now we have increased it to 125 crores, and as per our price, we indicated that 65 crores we have already achieved it, or we have issued it. But as far as cash flow, it indicates only 30 crores which are which has come to the business. So it, is it safe to assume that 90-95 crores will probably come in the second half? I will second, clarify. Because second half, then it will be. Yeah. yeah, and third on the capacity utilization across the product mix, you can help us to understand the future growth driver. Right. So these are the third questions. Three questions. Yeah, these are the four questions. First, you, uh, you told me about the, uh, the UAE business. You know that overseas we do manufacturing the packaging products only. That is called Jerrican, IBC, and drums. Now, I have clarified in the past also, overseas business, if I consider a 100% revenue, we normally get 30% revenue in the MENA region, which is inclusive of the four countries. That is Sharjah, Bahrain, Saudi, and Egypt. In Egypt is around 75% of revenue, if I am not wrong, I told Middle East revenue in the terms of the rupee is around 350 crores. And that 350 crores revenue, if I will sell out, there was out of the revenue figure was around 175 crores. 
So we had agreed to sell by getting 50% or 100% valuation was 50 million dollar and 50% valuation was to 25 million dollar, which if I will take my EBITDA of 22 and 23 average, we were selling at the time of the multi of between the between 7.5 around. But as this current year is concerned, 24, they are already one month away from closing of this year. So we have told very clearly, we should get the beta multiplier, not 22, it's a 23 and 24 average. Yes, and this was agreed in between us. And further, looking to the present growth, we have asked very simple questions. Because it took eight months time in continuing this deal. But again, delay is, is we are holding our decision about the uh, expansion plan of the Saudi and other expansion plan of the Middle East. So we thought when the company is growing, we should not agree because 150 crores this company is getting. It is a equivalent to, I can say, the four or five months profit of the company as a whole organization. That is the point we consider. And I have been clearly advised my board member not to sell this, um, this business. You grow yourself. Then the international business we have reviewed for next two, three years time and be sustainable and if the good growth is coming around 15%. So there is no need for sales. That is the guidance given by my board. Accordingly, we have conveyed this message to the, um, and uh, one thing again I am clarifying you, as a company side, we have not incurred any, because it's a succession based the transaction was there. So as a company, we have not incurred any kind of the expenses for sale of this investment. It was uh, whoever agencies were there also was very clear. If transaction goes to, then only you will get the fee. Otherwise, everything yes, are, we are back to the home. Now, second, you have asked non-core assets. Uh, I think you have heard about the March only. But in the month of last Q3 of 24, in the around November or December, I have said my non-core assets was 125 crores. By March, 30 crores was already realized. So balance 90 crores shown in the balance sheet for the realizable value for the 24-25. So out of that 90 crores, again, we have realized around 30 crores. So it's around 60 crores is pending. And that's also, we are, I mentioned to you, we are focusing that in the next 12 months time. Third, we have asked about the capacity. So capacity utilization. As the 15% company is growing and company management decided to do the only brownfield expansion wherever required looking to the each of the product capacity. For example, you have seen, we have a shortage of the capacity of seen the expansion, so definitely the expansion is going on. In, in some kind of the IBC, need-based expansion is doing in India and overseas put together. But I am glad to tell you, the overall capacity utilization, if you ask me, India and overseas put together is around 82%. And overseas utilization is more, 87%, and the India utilization is around 80%. So, contribution basis it is 82%. And that is as the company utilization increasing and the value of product sales is increasing. Therefore, we have seen the EBITDA, EBITDA is, um, is increasing on quarter and quarter by 20 to 30 basis points, which is evident on the margins. So, I think I will answer your other four. Yeah, sir. Thank you for the detailed answer. Just a follow-up questions on your first answer. When we indicated that we are not going with the middle end, so is it fair to assume that the growth, the target growth for the entire overseas is 15 percent, or it is only the middle is? No, middle is no, no. I am again because uh, you are right. If I am getting 100 percent revenue from overseas. We have a three continent. I can say one is the Middle East, where we get 30 percent of revenue. Around 50% revenue we get from the Southeast Asia, which covers Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Taiwan. And another 20% uh, revenue we uh, get from the uh, that USA part, where we have a presence in three cities. But as company management decided to expand further in USA, US country is growing now. The last two years situation is improving, and further it will strengthen as Trump has recently taken as the president of the USA. I think very aggressive. So considering, I'm very clear from my international director, international president to look after this business. He is targeting to grow to 15% overseas across the countries everywhere. So he can give me consolidation growth. India is also, we are quite confident for the two to three years time. Because uh, one another thing I am, uh, I think everybody is evident there. 
the oil prices have gone down in the range of 70 to 75 dollar which at one point of time it was 85 to 90 dollars so it is good when the polymer prices are down company give to take the strength and the benefit were passed on to the customer and it give good conversion from metal to the polymer and composite to the take place faster that is the metal advantage better advantage of conversion and this thing so and another thing it is seen that in the last one year or next one year also one or two years good new capacities of polymers are also coming i i am glad to tell you anybody in the process industry next three years good for the polymer processing and composite product company because the capacity and there is a demand gap between the demand and the supply so it is the buyers market you can ask your discount whatever things you want and the faster conversion will be there right yes sir yeah thank you sir thank you for the detail answer that's all from my side thank you always pleasure thank you thank you the next question is from the line of anushka rai roy from trade brains please go ahead uh hello thank you for this opportunity sir i wanted to ask you about the uh, value added product so in the presentation i read that the company is focusing on increasing the share from its value added product in terms of revenue and margin so i just wanted to understand uh, what are the plans for expansion in the pipeline and also i also read that in the qip uh, that it is mentioned that uh, the company is going to allocate some amount for this so what percentage of the qip uh, can be expected to be put in this segment i uh, in fact uh, if you go to the objective of the qip if i tell you company is going to do incur 100 rupees for the expansion i think you can consider almost 50% for value added product because then only that percentage can be the higher and this to the 35% of the total revenue and as i mentioned in previously also company in the existing product will do the brownfield expansion but the major expansion in india and overseas put together is the value added product and value added product which covered you have seen in my earning presentation slide what are the product covered under the value added products is clearly mentioned value added products are the composite lbg oxygen cng and the uh, moxilum and the ibc one another product we have not had here but very huge potential that is hydrogen cylinder and that is the futures will be um, in the hydrogen cylinders after the cng so company is focusing dot business also company has already got the approval for hydrogen cylinders and further i am glad to tell you another application is also coming up which government is also focusing on the application of cylinder in the drone the government is focusing and as using more drone by the agri agriculture use also and for surveillance so currently what i understand the most of the drone company i think 2025 companies are in india who have just uh, <coughs> is uh, engaged in manufacturing of the drone and as i understand drone value per uh, drone value ranging from 5 lakhs to 30 lakhs rupees and many agriculturists now started using the 40 for the fertilizer seed growing is the drone they are using and currently they use the batteries so 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 when they will use this um, cylinder, then they can go the fly on the uh, high, and further they can fly the more hours, four times capacity more than the present batteries that is they use it. So this a new application is coming, and very soon you will hold application or for the drone application of our products. I I will update as we get the final approval for this. Very huge opportunity in that line of the business. because internationally i understand it's a 40 billion dollar business as far as drones are concerned globally but india has a good opportunity we will see how the will grab that opportunity available here. so company you are right if i will incur 100 rupees the 50% will go for value added product and 50% for the brownfield expansion of the existing because value added product we are estimating growth of 30% year on year for at least next 3 years time and the value added pro- uh, existing product the packaging we are considering growth of 10 to 12% so so combined of both uh, is 
averaging uh, around 15% growth we are projecting. All right, sir. Uh, and sir, I also wanted to ask you one more thing, which is about your CAPEX. So what is the CAPEX plan for the H2 and FI26? And also what kind of growth are you expecting in terms of volume and value in this period? Uh, in fact, uh, I can tell you the volume growth because when you, uh, you have seen recently, as I mentioned, the 16% volume growth and revenue growth is 14% because of the price differences, revenue. But when we estimate our business, when I'm telling you the 15% growth, that is <coughs> the volume growth. Revenue, maybe 20%, maybe 10%, but the volume growth is uh, depending on the pricing of the each of the product, composite products and the polymer prices, which is linked with the demand supply. Now, you are asking me CapEx. Yes. You have seen in the last track record of the five or seven years, company was doing expenditure of in the range of around 180 to 200 crores. This year, including the value rate product sale, we had projected around 180 to 200 crores. And in the first half, around 99 crores is uh, 95 crores incurred. And in the balance of overall estimation, in the beginning of the year, we had given it will be around 175 to 80 crores. And if you ask me the net capex, after the reduction of the non-core assets, it will be in the range of around 125 to 130 crores. It's already in the beginning of the year, I have given my projections. So I think looking to the first half, 95 years, the maximum capex in the whole of the year will be in the range of 180 to 200 crores. And out of that, whatever process will come from the sale of the non-core assets will be netted off from this. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dolly Chaudhary from Neveshai. Please go ahead. The next question is from the line of Kush Bafna from Bafna Brothers Finance and Property Agent. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Hello? Yes. Yeah, Kush. Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, many congratulations on your uh, excellent uh, performance and also continuous uh, debt reduction. Uh, I just had a small question, sir, from my side about the trade receivables uh, which are uh, being shown in the book. Any uh, estimate as to uh, when that comes little down or this is how the company maintains uh, in general business conditions? No, no, it's okay. I think it is going to be down. As you know that, uh, especially <clears throat> normally I talk about the when working capital days I am talking, which is 100 days. So what happened always, uh, working capital cycle time, as we know the working is the inventory days, then receivable days, and the minus the creditors. So if I am getting more credit, I will give more credit to the debtors. But always one principle is very clear over company. If anybody would like to have a more credit more than 30 days time, I will have to simply add 1% cost of the credit to them. And that is the advantage to the company because if I am passing on my cost of the funding is around 9%. So if I am, I am taking 12%, so it is benefit the company. But at the same time, normally average the receivables we have seen 73 days. It's the combination of the various products. With some products, we give the credit of 60 days. Some products, we give the 90 days. But maximum credit, we give 90 days. For some of the products, which the industry itself is giving, so I have also to follow the industrial norms. For certain products, we give 45 days credit, so it's the average working out around 73 days. But if maximum, whatever efforts we'll do, we can go down to 70 days, not less than that, in the combination of that. Because in our nature of the product, we trust that we supply the products, then our customer considered the credit period after receipt of the material at their site or acceptance by their site. Because if you take the especially, for example, PE pipe product, we supply the material, customer received after 10 days, then it will receive from their site, then further from their site, they receive to, uh, they inform to their head office, and then, then head office will consider the day. If I am giving the credit of 40 days, the actual credit period will be 60 days. So I'm considering 15 days is acceptance and the transient period in receipt of the consignment. So, so if we do that best, best effort, it cannot go less than 70 days. I have to consider. But yes, what we can do, as we are keeping our target of 90 days, 
periods. What we can balance out, we can reduce the inventory level by five to seven days further, and that efforts are continuing because in the current scenario, our certain products which are we are depending on the imports. But yes, we are developing. We are have certain understand with the local manufacturer to develop this product in the next two years time. I don't want to mention the name of the polymer manufacturer because they are the large company and the confidentiality agreement signed between us to develop that product based on the government also like make in India. But I am sure in the two years time, this working of the cycle time 90 days based on the inventory level go down from 70 to 60. Data from 73 to 70, and the creditors to increase to uh, increase to 50 days. So that's where we will be able to maintain 90 days time. There is a still availability of uh, uh, availability of 10 days to improve working user cycle time. Right, sir. Thank you so much for your detailed answer, and wishing you all the best uh, for the forthcoming QIP and also the entering into draw. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Priyank Parekh from a back of asset managers, LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, my question is more of a clarificatory in the nature. So, uh, we, I think we have the CNG cascade capacity of 480 uh, cascades uh, per annum. Is it right, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, so cylinder, you can say thirty thousand cylinder. Yeah, so sir, uh, uh, currently we are in this quarter. If I say uh, we have manufactured one thirty five uh, in terms of volume, one thirty five caskets in terms of volume, and if I just do one thirty five into uh, four, it will give me a number around five forty. So just wanted to understand when we have uh, capacity of 480 cascades per annum, why this excess production? So uh, what is my gap in understanding? No, 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 no. You see that in the first half, how much sale was there? In the first half, it was the 95 cascades. Yes. Correct, sir. Second half, 135. You put both put together, is how much? It's 230. Yes. Right? Correct. So, so so number of the cascade, I tell you, the cascade is the two types of the cascade because number of the cascade I will mention it is not relating to 60 cylinder cascade because the cascade, certain cascade size where we use the 40 cylinder, certain cascade hmm. where we use the 60 cylinder, depending on the capacity of the each cylinder. Okay. So number of the cascade don't multiply directly. Number of the cascade, if I will sell the mini cascade and the, you know that bus, 60 passenger bus and mini bus and the big bus, there is a difference. Yes. Okay, understood. You see the number of the casket, you see the revenue part. Okay, understood, sir. So in terms uh, of the revenue, you can work out very well. The maximum revenue for 460 casket is there, and 460, 480 casket, if 90% utilization considering the holidays, the revenue can be of around 350 crores. Revenue can be generated from CNG business, whether I sell mini casket. Or I sell the uh, um, large big case cat. But yes, as the expansion, uh, if you attended my last call and you know Sunil Bhai and you Raman know very well, that the capacity of 600 cylinder around 3600 is coming in the queue for it is complete. So next year definitely the projections will be the higher. Okay, and that capacity is coming, sir, uh, on uh, which time period you see it? I think Q4 it is coming already. Um, my client okay, Q4. Okay, okay. okay. Understood, sir. It is delayed by six months. I mentioned in my last call also it is delayed because of the elections, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, because of the Red Sea problems, European problems, multi multiple problems were there. It is otherwise by this time. Which, hello. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, just a minute. Huh? Is, uh, yeah. So otherwise. Uh, the project would be on the streamline by this time, but it is delayed by almost four to five months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star N1. The next question is from the line of Dolly Chaudhary from Nevishai. Please go ahead. 
हेलो सर थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी आई हैड टू क्वेश्चन तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन आर प्रेजेंटेशन वी हैव मेंशन दैट इन सी एन जी सिलेंडर्स आर पर ईयर अपॉर्चुनिटी साइज इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड करोड एंड आई बिलीव इन आर दिस ईयर वी कैन डू अराउंड थ्री फिफ्टी टू फोर हंड्रेड करोड सो आई वॉन्टेड टू अंडरस्टैंड एज वी आर द ओनली प्लेयर हाउ इज द रिमेनिंग डिमांड इज बींग फुलफिल्ड No, no. I'm telling you, one of our it, it's a every customer give us some delivery schedule timing. In fact, so you know that if you go through my projections, large business potential is there as far as CNG cylinder is concerned. If you have gone through the policy of 2020, that as far as composite product CNG business potential is 28,000 crores for the different application with CNG cash cash, mobile refilling units, compressed biogas plants. You must have seen to the economic times. Which is the Reliance has declared 65,000 crore investment in compressed biogas plant in uh, is uh, the uh, Andhra Pradesh. So that is also where the cylinder can be used, CNG for intercity bus. But what we are projecting, it's a eight year and four years policy. So we are projecting the composite business cylinder business can be of 2,200 crore yearly business it is possible in the next three years time. Looking the policy of the government, so in that direction only we are working. So we are also targeting in the next five years time this composite product, which is currently 350 crores, can be reached to over 2000 crores in the five years time, and around 1500 crores in the next three years time. That is the we are also projecting in this business. In this business, we have not used the the all the existing casket which is metal casket because cng cylinders are available for more than 20 30 years in india this policy is for the new stations you know that indian government has allocated in 29 district uh, 8000 station new stations are um, um, under construction and allotment has been given to various gas distribution companies which include government and private gas distribution companies so very huge potential CNG and later on, future also it will go under the hydrogen also. Okay, so that was helpful. And uh, next question I had regarding the value-added products and the development that uh, we have presented. Uh, so I wanted to understand what can be the uh, like where are we on this composite fire extinguisher and uh, hydrogen cylinder? Uh, like what is the update on that and what can be the opportunity size for it going forward? In fact, in value terms, opportunity is very huge. We have not yet um, summarized at all. You know that <coughs> first thing is the composite fire extinguisher. Current fire extinguisher, you know that metal everybody has a compulsory. Every even now I have seen many societies are keeping many. The government authorities have to keep. Every industry has to keep it. But it is just formalities because everywhere you will see the fire extinguisher is made from the metal, which is very very heavy and it is not very. um uh, usable friendly like fire extinguisher i tell you the fire extinguisher which we are developing the weight will be 20% of the existing weight of the cylinder yes the price will be higher but you know that in india people are willing to price subject to the item can be used uh, you must have seen today nowadays the buyers of the apple phone are more than the other samsung phone similarly you see the prices are higher but people more buy it So this items which we are developing is a very high value items, but yes, it's a usable and and it has an advantage. Just my colleague director, Mr. Ramu Patil, will explain more about the fire extinguisher. See, uh, as Bharat was also explaining, that typically the fire extinguishers are made of metal and they are, you know, normally uh, installed at a place and very rarely in use. Though the cylinder is uh, extinguishers are not used, they undergo a lot of corrosion and the deterioration of the cylinder and when the need comes in you have to ensure that these cylinders are actually in working condition or many many places that are you observe that the cylinders are non functional and they don't even work because of the fact they continue to corrode the advantage of the composite cylinders would be that they will not rust or corrode and that's a big advantage that it will have uh, in some of the uh, uh, new trains that have been rolled out by the government of india such as the vande bharat etc If you go through the documents there in the tender documents, they have mandated the use of composite fire extinguishers in those uh, new age trains. So it's a clear acknowledgement as well of the technology that is available, and we are moving in that direction. The uh, demand is enormous; there is no doubt about it. 
likewise the uh, hydrogen um, tech uh, i would put it the story is very well uh, validated and uh, most of the geographies most of the countries in any geography they are all proceeding on this we are also in a position to see uh, there are enough uh, you know uh, initiatives being taken both by the government as well as by the private sectors to you know venture into hydrogen multiple uh, hydrogen generating plants have already put in place so there is a lot of uh, interest that is being generated in the high pressure cylinders that are being manufactured by us so we are very hopeful that uh, you know all these new initiatives in this new technology items are going to be a, a good uh, opportunity for the company to grow so just a follow up question so i, I want to know if there are other players also who are in india who are working on this composite fire extinguisher if, if it's compulsory in vande bharat maybe there must be other players also who are working on this Yes, there would be some initiative that will be taken. I mean, since we have taken the lead, uh, we are there uh, much ahead of the others. So, uh, in any industry, you will have some people or the other who will follow us. There is no doubt about it. But one thing, why we are going under this development because we are already working on the composite products since last four years. So, one experience what we have, you know that in composite product, initially we started from the LPG cylinder, then we expanded to the CNG cylinder. Then we have expanded to the oxygen. Now we expanded to the hydrogen. So at least somebody has to uh, pass on the uh, basics, whichever is there. It took time in the five years. So always you know the person will advantage the experience and R&D we have. If anybody straight when come, it will it is, it is not very easy for everybody means. Right, sir. Uh, that will be also. Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Heat Vora from Guardian Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I had one question on the CNG cylinder, CNG composite cylinder. So in the AR, we have written that we have already gotten an approval from uh, Tata Motors. While I know that you know we are going to look at automated applications only once the new capacity comes in. But uh, any uh, move, any sort of RFQs that we've received from maybe Tata Motors for uh, the CNG cylinders. Okay, uh, I just clarify you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, today we have an approval for automotive industry for the size of 60 liters. For the gas industry, 156 liters. Now. As I have mentioned, I think if you attended my last call, we have a uh, capacity limitations because currently whatever we are producing, we are selling as a complete casket where we use the CNG cylinder and selling as a casket to the gas distribution company. Now, definitely because you know the automotive industry already we have approval and currently automotive industry is using the uh, cylinders which is made from the metal only. So we have started working with them. We know that it's an 8 to 12 months project when working with the automotive line. So already my team have started working with them, getting the drawings, do the drawings. Because every, every vehicle uh, capacity is the different. Then we need to do the development of the tool for each and every model and each and every manufacturer. So our team has started talking with them. And when expansion will come in the Q4 of this FY25, thereafter, it will take uh, with the each, each of the OEM and uh, supply them. Approval we have already. There is approval wise, there is no problem. Is that we have a currently limitation, and instead of selling the only cylinder to them, better to use the valued product and sell as a casket to the gas distribution company. There is a priority on that. So, so actually my question was, uh, I mean, have the plant audits been done by these OEMs? Of course, oh, OEM, IMM, uh, we are the category one supplier. We are having a green channel with the all OEMs because certain OEM products we have done, for example, Tata, we are already working diesel fuel tanks, we have worked out and we are supplying from my Pandagar factory. You know that Tata Magic Correct. and uh, that vehicle, they are using that uh, fuel tank of the gas, uh, this uh, uh, diesel fuel tanks, we are supplying. For composite product, air receiver tank, we have worked for 30 liters with them, now 20 liters under development. Certain composite products which are not under commodity nature, special, we have a relationship with Tata, Ashok Leder, and so we do some of the automotive components which are not of the commodity, a specific customized product, we already deal with them. So, so, 
So in fact, people they started talking with them. They, we are in process of getting their design, rank, approvals, then we will do the development, submit them, then the, then the PASO approval will be required. And when you go in automotive industry, then then automotive research institute, which is in Pune, their approval will also will be required. So we'll do the right time that all get the approvals and we will introduce that in automotive industries also. But there are so many other things, many, many composite products, by using the same line, we can bug out for the automotive industry. Understood. That will work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devam from Adrico. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, sir, on a decent set of numbers. Uh, wanted to ask a few questions. So, yeah. firstly, uh, we have seen typically in the past that uh, there is a propensity that we have higher revenues in H2. So yeah. can we expect that based on the way our current business order books and everything is placed that H2 should be higher revenue than H1 for us given the client mix and their programs and everything? It always happens. As I mentioned you, in Q1 we get business up 22%, Q2 24%, both put together 45-46%. So it's the first half you will see 45%, last 10 years progress you can see that. And the second up, always we get 55%. Then again in Q3, 26%, and Q4, 28%. It's, it's, it's a trend of the industry. Last Q4, always turnover is high. You see the last uh, Q4 turnover, the Q3. It is really, really comparable. Sure, sir. A couple of questions on the expansions. One is PPL uh, plastic, we have announced an expansion. So, what kind of total capex and asset terms do we expect over there? And also, in uh, at the overall, that is at the time techno overall total capex, how much do we expect for entire FI 25 and 26? And in general, what are the guiding rules that we would consider for an expansion in terms of asset terms and margins to consider it in a particular product or technology type? Uh, you are agreed. I think you're right question. As far as you ask me, the overall capex as a consolidation basis, India, overseas, put together, is in the range of 160 to 180 crores, or maximum 200 crores. Now, out of the 200 crores also, you will see around 70 to 80 crores on account of the maintenance capex, automation, re-engineering to maintain the capacity, and to maintain the capacity, and the tool developments. Balance 120 crores, expansion where we will edit the capacity in value products or the existing product capacity. Now, especially another you have asked me, and especially this year I mentioned out of 180 to 90 crore, we have already non-core assets, sales business will be there, so net of that, uh, the capex will be hardly 140 to 150 crores. And then 25-26, we have the same in the range of 150 to 180 crores, considering the expansion line in India and overseas. And somebody has asked me just um, in this call itself, how you distribute, I'm very clear. In our business, when we did product, when we invest 1 rupees, we get more than 3 times our revenue. But when we, we do the investment in the other existing product line, downfield expansion, Normally, we see the three times of the revenue we should get it in the value product, and the other products we get the uh, in the range of two to two point five times. But we have seen whenever we do the automation reengineering product, we consider payback period, and payback period should be less than four years to whether by way of a reduction in the power cost, reduction in the labor cost, etc. So, so many other areas also I am working. I am not advising every, but I am I am led to tell you. We are working on the power cost reductions also. As you know that government is also focusing on the use of the solar power. I'm just bulk part figure which I remember I would like to tell you. In a year in India we use 15 crores units of the power. So now, you know that certain government's policy has come out in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Gujarat to you can buy up to 75 to 80 percent of your power requirement from the solar manufacturing company. So already, we have already signed agreement, we have done the equity investment, and we are going to save almost three rupees a unit. So if I just remember, around four crore units, which we have a requirement in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, and uh, Karnataka, we have signed. So company will be able to save next year at least 12 crores on account of the power, power cost itself. 
because otherwise my power cost itself is more than 110 crore something we are paying annually. Now the similar policy we are expecting in the other states also, like in uh, in Telangana, in uh, Uttarakhand, in uh, in, yeah, in Himachal, everywhere we are expecting yes, because one of our team is completely following with the government. Uh, ministry department and the other local departments, wherever policy is coming, immediately we are tying up and try to save this cost. This is the major cost as far as power is concerned. Our in business, two are the major costs other than the raw material, is the power and the main power. So we work hard on that, how we can reduce this cost by increasing the productivity and by increasing doing the automations. So we will be able to get the more productivity and increase the percentage and offer our products competitive pricing to the customer. That is the main objective of the company.